You know what we're going to do now, folks? We've been waiting. How many days, Lordo? We've been waiting 81. 81. 81 days Ooh. we've been waiting for this, but finally, footy's going to be back up and running, and it all starts, restarts, Thursday night, MCG, Collingwood up against Richmond. Make sure you get your tickets. Oh, yeah. Anyway, and then, of course, uh, it continues right through uh, the Geelong Hawthorne game. Each and every one of those games are uh, very, very worthwhile and very exciting, potentially, in their own right. Uh, let's talk about Collingwood Richmond. Yep. First game of the year, and I think it could be the, the precursor to the AFL Grand Final. I think these Ooh. two sides are good enough to play in it. I think Richmond are definitely going to be there. Collingwood... Two years ago, they had 30-plus goal kickers. They had six of them. Dugowie, Stevenson, Elliott, Majacek, Hoskin Elliott and Josh Thomas. All those guys were a little bit down on form last year. If they can beat Richmond in that area with those rotating forwards, because Cox won't play, I think they're a huge chance to knock the Tigers off. Only if those guys can hit the scoreboard. I worry if they can kick enough goals, but... If they come to the party, all those rotating forwards, I think they're a huge shot to beat the Tigers. That's right, Nathan. As we said, keep it tight and pacey. <laughs> now, uh, Geelong and Hawthorne uh, mm. continue the round at Cadinia Park on Friday night. And I can't believe that one of Geelong's greatest ever is going to help the Hawks. I am indeed, Tony. And here it is here. Because they haven't been down the highway for 14 years, Hawthorne. So here's Waverley Park, OK? So you get in the car. <laughs> And you drive through Melbourne. Now, be careful, because on the West Gate, there's always a prang, and it holds you up, OK? It's going to take more than an hour and 18. Then you come down here. This is called the Princess Freeway. Freeway. Um, Werribee is there. And you come in. There's Little River. When they broke down, that's how the band was formed, because they broke down there, and they stopped there, and it was... The joint was called yeah, right Little on, River. Get on with it. And they called it the Little River Band. And then you come in here through past Lara, and there is GMHBA, one hour 30, OK? And then when you're going home, there's the Cryo Bay Road. Oh, yeah, the Jaffles. Here. And you get a Jaffle. Yeah. It's magnificent, the Jaffle. So I haven't been down there for 14 years. And uh, Carlton, sure. Carlton play Melbourne. Massive game for these two clubs because uh, they both had poor performances in round one. Carlton were terrible against Richmond. Melbourne were terrible against West Coast. I want to put it on Mitch McGovern. So he's Ooh. come with a big price tag and he just has not delivered. He hasn't even been in shape. So, you know, that's a real concern for them. This was round one. He had seven disposals and kicked one goal. And his history at Carlton, 17 games, 23 goals. So, you know, no Charlie Kerno. All eyes should be on him and he's got to start delivering. Well said, Lordo. Yeah. Big pressure on those two teams. Looking forward to the showdown on Saturday night. I want to take a look at the Crows' ruck. Badly beaten was Riley O'Brien by Naismith against Sydney in round one. Centre bounce clearances were 20 to 5. They got absolutely smashed. Now, they let Sam Jacobs go. He signed for a two year deal at GWS and there's no other backup ruckman to, Sam J uh, to Riley O'Brien at Adelaide. So it's going to be left to the likes of Taylor Walker to help out in the ruck, which I don't mind him going in there for a couple of minutes per quarter, but that's an issue for them. It's going to be a long year, unfortunately. Can't say like enough goes. goals. No, no Jenkins, long... no bets, a lot left to Walker. And, and Fogarty, who's a good up-and-coming player, but no bets as well, as you said. So No more bets. No more bets, Bill. Long year for the Crows coming up. Hey, Port, where do they finish? In top four? Uh, top, not, top, not top no. four. I, I would have them between sixth and twelfth. If order. Charlie Dixon has a massive year, I think they can finish top four. I think it all revolves around Charlie Dixon. Hey, Damo, Giants play North. Do you give North a chance in this one? No, I don't. No. I mean, they were really good against St Kilda, but they got themselves more than five goals down in the second quarter of yeah. that game. It was a really good win, but it was against St Kilda, not a team that played in yeah. last year's And the final. Giants were outstanding yeah. in round one. Right. Yeah. And they you throw in Perryman, who kicked four goals, had 20 disposals yeah. to that forward setup. They've got another goal scoring option. Yeah. And on Sydney Essendon, I don't think you can get Sydney at a better time from Essendon's mm. perspective. I think with no Lance Franklin playing, uh, Sam Reid yeah. saw. Mm. Um, I so just who's their forwards? Time. Tom McCartan. Uh, McCartan. He'll yeah. be up there. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, Apparently he'll control the game. Yeah, yeah. Can I just ask about the fact that uh, Essendon and North Melbourne are sharing a flight mm. to Sydney and Reece Shaw doubling down yes. on that yesterday. Does it, 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 seriously, does it matter? I don't no. think so. I know we had to. We played a game in Wangaratta. Um, well, you didn't get there. What's that? No, there was another time. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we beat Richmond by about seven or eight goals. And the tension between us and Richmond on the flight home because we just played them. Yeah. In this situation, they're not playing against each other, so I don't think there's any concern. I think Reese is just playing yeah. along with a bit of banter, isn't he? I think they're keen, TJ, to try and get up some old-fashioned rivalry, yeah. which um, has probably been lacking from the game. I, I, I think the Bulldogs GWS matchup now is the game's big one, apart from the obvious showdown uh, component. But uh, I think that's behind the, the reasoning for Reshaw going hard. All right, what about uh, St Kilda up against uh, the Western Bulldogs? Now, this is interesting. You can tell us about the intricacies of it in just a tick. But St Kilda supporters, or oh, the Bulldogs, uh, you can go along to the Dramana Drive-In mm. here in Victoria and uh, just plonk yourself there. Mm. 
put the speaker in. Well, they don't have a speaker anymore. You tune it into your car radio, Bill. Not yeah. like the days when you went to the drive-in. Don't go there. Um, but anyway, <laughs> you can sit down and actually watch the game on the big screen, which I think is a great initiative. Get some Two popcorn. sides who are slightly disappointing around one. Uh, St Kilda started so well against the Kangaroos and then got rolled. But more importantly, the dogs were bitterly disappointing, Lord O. Do you, yeah. just, do you just put a line through that one and go, OK, that can happen. They all look flat. I've never seen Bond and Pally look as lethargic as what he did. He's not going to be that way. Mm. Um, Dunkley couldn't get a kick either. McRae couldn't get a kick. I, I just think you've got to put a line through that one. Start the season again for the Dogs because what they served up late last year is what I think the Dogs are going to give this yeah. week. Yeah, they were awful round one. I think the biggest disappointment of round one, but I think they'll hit back hard against the Saints.